Today's message is PG-13, though, okay? We're going to go there and some stuff. And so if you have kids that are here, um, fifth grade and under, I just encourage you to take advantage of kids' ministries. It's great ministry over there. They're going to have fun with them and speak to their language and stuff. If you have kids that are sixth grade or above, I would love to ask you as a, as a parent and as your pastor to allow me to have this conversation with, with them as well because um, they're hearing more than this, I promise you, outside of church, okay? So I would, I'll, I'll start the conversation. In fact, I'll start the conversation here and I want you to finish it later. I want you to continue the conversation about this, okay? So don't let this die here. You go ahead and continue the conversation. But is PG-13 what we're gonna be talking about um, today? Before I get into it though, last week I was online and was just scrolling as I sometimes do and as you do. And I saw this article, it said 15 things you're doing wrong obvious clickbait. You know what I mean? So what did I do? I clicked on it. <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing wrong? And, so, I, and there was a lot of stuff on there that it was like, it's just random stuff. But one of them was pronunciation. You're pronouncing things wrong, it said. And a lot of it was like, yeah, yeah, I know that. I know that. But some of it was a little bit like, like a little bit shocking. It may be shocking for you too. So I'd like to show you some of this. How do you pronounce this word right here on the screen? How do you pronounce that? Yeah, that's what I thought. There's no R after the E. It's sherbet ice cream. Sherbet. And anytime you've spelled that or seen it spelled, B-E-R-T, you're wrong. Okay? This is not a thing. It's sherbet ice cream. Okay? So you've been ordering ice cream wrong and so have I. Kind of like sherbet every now and then. Sherbet now. Sherbet. Okay. How about this word? How do you say this one? Yeah. All of you got that wrong. It's bruschetta. Bruschetta, you've been ordering your Italian appetizers wrong the whole time, and they were letting you like this idiot, you know. I'm just kidding. They weren't, they're probably wrong too, you know. Because I bruschetta, it's bruschetta, okay. How about this one? How do you say this? Ah, all right. Let's settle this once and for all. Like, like we're going to put this thing to bed. It will no longer be something that is like if or arguable. We're going to settle this debate once and for all today because it was on jeopardy, y'all. And they went back to the original like language and meaning. Like, like what is the pronunciation? How do you pronounce this? Let's see it here. How many of you believe it's gif, gif, gif? Let me see your hands. Yeah, it's gif. I have gif. Okay, how many are like jeff, jeff? It's jeff. Yeah, okay, okay. All right, here we go. Drum roll, please. Let's settle this thing. Drum roll, drum roll. It's Jeff. Jeff, it's Jeff. Some of you are shaking your head. No, no, no. You're wrong. You're wrong. It's, it's Jeff, okay? And so it's like, done. So as I was, like, there was a whole bunch of other things in the article. Let me just, I'm not going to go over them all with you. But in the article, there was like 15 things you're doing wrong. Others were breathing. I was like, I'm breathing wrong? showering, working out, going to the bathroom, washing hands, sleeping, eating, brushing teeth, shaving, to just name a few. But as I was reading these and I was preparing for today, I was thinking there is, there's one thing on this list that I am certain that we are doing wrong that actually has a lot more impact on your life than any of these things combined. Pew Research Center, a Pew Research Center study says this, 50% of U.S. Christians believe that casual sex between consenting adults is sometimes are always acceptable. Christians who say they believe in this truth have somehow either redefined what this is or adapting to our culture lifestyle or saying that it's sometimes are always, if I love them, if we're together, if we're gonna get married anyway, 62% of Catholics, 54% of Protestants, and 36% of evangelical Protestants uh, say that. Among the religiously unaffiliated, a staggering 84% say casual sex is acceptable. So, so how, do, how do we get here? How do we, how do we, how do we, how, why, how are we excusing this? What does the word of God say then? Because there's even some people like, the word of God doesn't say, the word of God is not against, you know, premarital sex, Pastor Jason. I looked at the Greek, which every dude who wants to sleep with his girlfriend knows is a Greek scholar. You know what I mean? <laughs> Greek. I'm going to help you out with that today, okay? Because just like there's a right way to pronounce, there's right and wrong here, okay? Which, 
Side note, some educators now, they can't even correct pronunciation to their students because some cultures don't pronunciate that way. And who are you to say you can't say specifically instead of specifically? The dictionary does. That's <laughs> the English language does, okay? So understand cultural might say it differently, but there is a right way. There is a right and a wrong. And the problem is our culture has moved away from objective truth and the standard of right and wrong, and now it's a subjective truth with a personal standard of right and wrong. And I think this is one of the greatest consequences. If we're getting this wrong, it can have the greatest consequences in your life. The title of today's Truth Over Chan topic is Sex Lies and Culture Ties. Sex Lies and Culture Ties. Before you think, oh man, here's another pastor just telling me not to have sex before marriage. What's this guy? No, you know, this, this pastor. Let me just tell you, I was not always a pastor, okay? I have a very, very, um, you know, sexually promiscuous past, a, a tattered past, you guys. I, I am not standing up here saying, like, trying to get, make anyone feel shame or guilt or, or, or any of that stuff, I want you to know that just like I have found, you can find forgiveness and healing and restoration and power to live different in a very confused world. Amen, somebody? But let's be very clear about this. For anyone today, if you're in that category of Christians, you somehow have convinced yourself to live more like the world than what God desires for your life. Let's look to the truth then. Allow it to conform our life instead of um, our lives conform to culture around us. Ephesians chapter 5, starting at verse 3. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place. They shouldn't be around God's people. And we got to face the fact, you guys, we're living in a world today that keeps shifting the goalposts, doesn't it? When it comes to sexual immorality, what was sexually immoral, you know, a few decades ago and, and 50 years ago is now like, it's just constantly changing. Culture is constantly redrawing the line when it comes to sexual immorality. But let me tell you something, God's line doesn't move. It's drawn in truth, and that truth has not changed for thousands of years from the Old Testament to the New Testament. In fact, that word sexual immorality that Paul uses, let me go to the original language for you guys in the Greek here that the New Testament was written in. That word in Greek is pornea. It's where we get the word porn or pornography. And this is what it literally means. This word means any sexual activity outside of a man and a woman in marriage. This is what this word means every time you see this in the New Testament. And this would include sometimes used for adultery, fornication, homosexuality, sex with children, pedophilia, or intercourse with animals, bestiality. Okay, let's be honest, you guys. The world says, well, that's just love. Who are you to judge? But, but when are we going to wake up, you guys? When you stop drawing the line, anything can become acceptable. And that's what they're doing today. Like there are some things on that list that you're like, it's a little bit more acceptable. And the some you're like, no, no, never that. Well, who gets to draw the line then? Because now we got movements like NAMBLA. You guys know what NAMBLA is? The North American Men Boy Love Association. This is a, a real movement that has funding behind it to shift and change laws in our cities and in our states that are trying to, under the guise of love, they're trying to legalize pedophilia. Okay, this is, where's the line then? If we don't, if we don't stand on God's truth, how long before this is normalized, this evil is normalized too? And I promise you, it's just a matter of time before you see it on a ballot. It is a matter of time. What used to be unthinkable is now subject for debate in some circles. You say, well, not in my circle, but you just wait. It starts with you as a, as a, as a follower of Jesus. Where's your standard and where's your line? Is it God's or is it this wor world? It's time we stop asking how close we can get to the line and start running toward holiness, church. Let me go back to this, Ephesians 5. Let's look at, let there be none of it, none of the sexual immorality, none of that fornication, adultery, none of the, anything outside of man, woman, and marriage. That's, that's, that's not impurity and greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes, these are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. 
you can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of God, of Christ, and of God. For a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Don't be fooled by it, guys. Don't be fooled by the world, by culture, by the standard, by the moving of goalposts, by those who try to excuse these sins, for the anger of God is on you. It's on you, if this is your practice and belief. Okay, so what are the, the lies that culture is telling us about sex? Let's be very clear about what God says sex is and what the lies are, okay? Here, let me give you the lies first. Culture wants us to believe that sex, write this down, is an animalistic action. It's just instinctual, right? You're created this way. And it's just responding to the natural urges of your, you know, responding to your feelings. And that's okay to respond to your feelings because your feelings are what's true to you. That's you. You are not what you feel. Come on, somebody. You are not what you feel. You are who God says you are. You don't respond to every impulse and feeling. If I responded to every impulse and feeling, I would probably be in jail right now. The world wants you to believe it's instinctual, that it's just like a, I don't know, a fish, ca a bear catching a fish in, the, in a river or something like that. It, you've got needs, fulfill them. It's just biology. But if we reduce ourselves to biology, guess what? We're not living like humans in the image of God. We're living like animals in a jungle. And listen, you guys, we weren't created to live by our instincts. We, we, we're, we were designed and created by the spirit of God. We're not animals. We're children of God can't help it. It's just your instinct. No, you're not an animal. I know you've got instincts, but you're not an animal. You're not like them. You have God's, God's design and image in you. Okay, the second lie that culture wants you to believe about sex is that it's just recreational. It's a recreational activity. It's something that we do for fun. In fact, it's like a game. How many did we get? How good are we at it? Like we're supposed to schedule between bowling night and Taco Tuesday or something. Let me tell you something. Sex was never meant to be a hobby. It's not like signing up for the pickleball league. You can't just pick up and play, right? Without consequences. It's deeper than that. It's spiritual. In fact, I would love for you to write that down in the margin somewhere. It's spiritual, you guys. It's holy. Culture says you can play around with it. No, you weren't meant to play with fire and expect not to get burned. Okay, the third lie is that sex is an isolated event. You know, we even have sayings for this, right? What happens in Vegas Stays in Vegas. Wrong. Wrong. What happens in Vegas shows up in my counseling room. The idea that sex is isolated, that's just some one-time thing. It's no big deal. It's the devil's favorite lie. It's his favorite lie. He's, the world says, hey, it's just a one-night stand. It's just one moment. But the truth is, it has a lasting effect and impact. What, doesn't, what happens in Vegas doesn't just stay there. It sticks. It attaches to your heart, to your mind, into your soul. Yeah, you might forget their name, but that imprint is on you. That memory stays with you. Don't believe the lie that you can keep like sex in this neat box. Like it, it's a bond, not just a moment. This, this is one of the enemy's biggest lies about, about sex, man, because it's more than just not getting pregnant and contracting diseases. No, no, the enemy is after your soul. Okay? He wants to destroy your ability to produce intimacy in marriage and in union. Okay, that's what he's after. It's a lie of the enemy. Here's, another, here's the last lie. Sex is just physical. This is a classic. It's just physical. There's no strings attached. There's always strings attached, you guys. The world tells you that it's just two bodies doing their thing, but God says it's two souls becoming one. And you know what happens when you start trying, tying things together without commitment? You end up getting tangled in ways that you never intended. You think you're just connecting bodies, but it's more, it's more than that. It's spiritual. It's emotional. Let me tell you, there's no such thing as no strings attached. And the reason why, like, why did God do this then? Why did God create it that way? Because he was trying to produce for you intimacy. It's, it's this, this highest form of unity between one man and one woman. Let me say it like this. Real love is defined by a commitment to a person, not a feeling. And if love means anything, then love will mean nothing. Real connection isn't found in a one-night stand. It's found in a lifetime covenant. That's real love. The world wants sex to be cheap, but God has made it 
priceless. And let's be clear about something about sex, you guys. God created sex for more than procreation, okay? Like, God knew what he was doing. He wanted you to enjoy sex. He made it fun. Isn't God cool? God was like, I want you to enjoy this. This is going to be cool for you, okay? You're really going to like this. This is a good idea, okay? He wants you to enjoy it. But there are guidelines, and the guidelines, they're not for him. They're not for him. You don't have, it's actually for you, for your benefit, for your blessing, for your future. So let's talk about the truth, though. We talked about the lies. Well, what is God's truth then? Because if we don't get this right, culture is going to fill the void with the lies of this world, of what sex is. So what is sex according to God's design then? Number one, sex, according to the, according to the Word of God, is for married people. It's for married people. But why? Why is that so important? Man, I love them. We're going to get together anyway. We're going to be married. We're going to, why? Genesis chapter 2. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. He's talking about sex here. Isn't that interesting? God thought up of sex, and God gave us sex before sin ever entered the human equation. Did you know that? Sex isn't dirty. It is like a design by God. It's not bad, but it must be used in a God-given and God-intended, ordained way. You know, I've never met an older person who looks back on their life and says, you know, I wish I would have slept with more people. My life would be so much better if I slept with more people. No, never. In fact, I talk to a lot of older people that say, I wish I did it differently. Look, I talk to so many people who, go, who are filled with so much shame and so much regret and so much baggage and consequences that they're dealing with. Now, nobody with the wisdom of life looks back and says, man, if I could have just slept around with more. No, it doesn't work. It's never worked. Sex outside of marriage doesn't make your life better. It just makes it more complicated. It's not working. If you're honest with yourself, you know, you'd admit, it ain't working for you. It's just causing more pain and heartache. If you look even outside of your life to your parents or your family, you can see, man, for some of us, life is drastically worse because of this issue, pain and divorce and memories and lies and secrets. But when it's done God's way, you get God's results. And look what God's results. Verse 25 says, Adam and his wife were both naked, truth, transparency, intimacy, and they felt no shame. And they had no shame because they were in the covenant of marriage. Shame creeps in when you step outside of God's design. Sex without commitment is like a fire outside the fireplace. It's going to burn everything. It's going to burn everything down. God designed sex for marriage and the marriage bed because commitment is the only place strong enough to handle the weight of intimacy. But pastor, you don't understand, it's so hard these days. Talk to people, it's so hard, pastor, it's everywhere, and how are we supposed to? It just seems like it's impossible. Is that a standard kind Like, how are we supposed to? You know, the Bible answers that question for you, by the way. There is a truth for you to receive if you're like, Oh, it's just impossible, Pastor. There's a truth for you. Here it is. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9, but if they cannot control themselves, they should masturbate. Oh, my bad. I didn't say that, huh? Oh, but if they can't control themselves, then they should try oral sex. That'll work. That's, that's cool. No. If they can't control themselves, let's try over the pants stuff. No. If, you're, if you can't control yourself, They should marry, for it is better to marry than for you to burn in hell with your lust. If you're burning with passion, don't play with fire. Put a ring on it. Who am I talking to today? Don't want to hear this. It's so hard. I know. I get it. That's why when I was 20 years old, I gave my life to Jesus. I got married one year later. One year. I'm in love with you, girl. (laughs) Till death do we part. (laughs) God's plan for sex, it's not to steal your fun. It's actually to protect your future. Okay? So look, this is is God's design, and it's awesome. It's amazing. But it's really, it's his idea, okay? But he says it's for this. It's for marriage. Number two, 
the truth is, sex is not only for marriage, but it's the ultimate expression of intimacy. It's beautiful. It's how God designed it, that it would produce something so powerful and even supernatural that even chemically and physically and a soul, spiritual level, true intimacy is soul deep, not skin deep. Sex was God's idea, being united. That word united, it's one of the words used for sex in the Bible, and it literally means the mingling of souls, to be united. Sex is beautiful when, when done, until it loses its spiritual context. You young people and my single friends today, please listen to me. Giving up something now for something better later is not a sacrifice. It's called an investment. That's what literally an investment is. You are investing into what? Into yourself, young woman, young man. You're investing into your future. You're investing into your home, your children, your legacy. It is an investment, not a sacrifice. There's a lot of things. So a lot of people don't understand that. First Corinthians, look at this with me. Let me give you a little background now to First Corinthians in this place called Corinth. The apostle Paul planted this church in Corinth, which was like this, this chief city in Greece, the center of commerce and, and politics. And it, it, it was a prime place to plant a church because of that. But the main religion was the worship of the goddess Aphrodite there. And there was over 1,000 priestess prostitutes, that it was a religion of prostitution and sexual worship. So this was a place where people in Corinth, they didn't think anything about sex. It was just recreation. It was just casual. It wasn't anything like, like, like you know, big, a big deal about it at all. It's this isolated event. So he says this to the church at Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Do you know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? What you're doing with your body, it's his. That's God's. Shall I then take this body that actually is, belongs to Jesus and unite them with a prostitute? No, I didn't unite. I just don't even remember her name. No, no, no. You united. Look what it says. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? I am, I'm not, I, how am I one? It's not a big deal. No, when you have sex, you unite with them. Sex isn't physical, it's a soul thing. For it is said that two will become one flesh. You leave a part of you with them and you take a part of them with you. This is what happens, spiritually. But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Sex is about intimacy. And when you take it out of the context God designed, you mess up this intimacy thing. And the sad reality is, many of you know it's true. You know it. And so here I am putting the mirror in front of you where last week you're like, yeah, how come they don't just obey God? The truth is, hey, here's here's the truth. Here's the mirror. Some of you are just comfortable living like dogs instead of God-created humans. Okay? Some, Some of you are out here like sniffing around like strays, sniffing around town. Catch a scent and you go crazy. Some of you strays need to be neutered. No, I'm just kidding. Let me just. <laughs> but here's, look, I want to I wanna call you. Listen, man of God, woman of God, I want to call you to a higher standard of living, a higher standard of sexuality that is in line with your design and your creator. And I promise you, that when you do align that with, with your design, you're going to have so much more peace and fulfillment and, and power like like the way we're doing it right now, if you're honest, it's not working, man. It's, it's just causing, maybe it's a temporary thrill, but there's so much pain and baggage that you have to deal with and your kids will have to deal with and you're gonna generationally have to deal with. It's just not, it's not worth it. Sex, sex is God's idea and it's the ultimate expression of intimacy. The, the third thing, sex should be taken seriously is what I'm saying today. Because what you do with your body, listen to me, it shapes your soul. What you do with your body shapes your soul. Continuing in 1 Corinthians 6, the Apostle Paul says, flee, like run. Don't try to manage this. Run from it. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a man commits, look what he's saying here. He's putting this in another category. I know all sin is sin, and we're like, you know, we're all sinners. We all are sinners, but there's different consequences for different sins, and the apostle Paul is putting this in a whole other category. Look what he says. All other sins a man commits are outside of his body, but this one's different, man. When you sin sexually, it's against your own body. Do you not know that your bodies 
or a temple of the Holy Spirit, you're literally dragging what is holy in God's and, and you're putting it uniting in an unholy way. This is in a whole nother category. The Holy Spirit's in you, whom you've received from God. You're not your own. You are bought with a price. You're his. You belong to him. Your life belongs to him. Your body belongs to him. He is Lord. And what makes him Lord, by the way, you belong to him, is that he gets to call the shots in your life. He gets to draw the line. It says, this is how you pronounce it. This is the correct pronunciation. This is, this is where, where, where it belongs, right here. This is how I created it. That's what makes him God, is he gets to say that and you submit to it. If you don't submit to it, then he's not God. Therefore, honor God with your body. This isn't just physical. It's not just sex. It's some of the deepest wounds are the wounds people have that have been violated sexually. This is why. Because it's just different. Scripture puts it in its own category. And this is why, for some of you, it's so hard to get over your ex. Okay, this is why you want to drink too much and excuse, you know, for an excuse to make a drunk phone call to him and, and hook up. Because, because you gave yourself to them in a way you weren't supposed to, and now they have your heart in a way that they were never intended to have your heart. So what do we do? How do we, how do we overcome these sexual strongholds, is, which is, in fact, what they are? So if you're today, you're trapped in addiction, or you're trapped in your shame, or you're flirting online, or you're in an adulterous relationship, or you're about to, or you're in Reddit, or you're dabbling on Pornhub, or OnlyFans, whatever it is, that you find yourself in a trap, how do we get out of it? I'm going to help you get out of it, okay? Today, in Jesus' name, I'm going to help you get out of that thing, all right? First Thessalonians chapter 4, I like the living Bible of, of verse 3 and 7. It says, God wants you to be pure and to keep clear. Another translation says, flee or run, but keep clear of all sexual sin, for God has not called us to be dirty-minded and full of lust, but to be holy and clean. I get asked sometimes by, by people, uh, you know, keep clear. Okay, how, how far is too far, though, Pastor? Like, what's the, what's the boundary? Like, how do I know? What's the good boundaries to set up? How do I know I've gone too far? Is it and so people ask me for advice all the time about, like, the boundaries of marriage and how do you keep clear? What's the right... One, you want me to give you the, because there isn't like a, there are some lines that God draws, but when you talk about the boundary not to get over there, which one it is, there is, it's different for a lot of you. But let me, let me give you a very clear boundary for any of you young people, any of you single people today. How do you know it's gone too far? Here it is. Here's the boundary. When your body starts preparing itself for sex, you've gone too far. Do I need to show you a picture? Okay. When your body starts preparing itself for sex, you have gone too far. You crossed the line to which some guys I talk to be like, well, pastor, I can't even be alone with her then. Yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you can't be alone, not alone alone. Someone else better be there then. And so others are like, well, I can't even hold her hand though because dang it. And I'm like, then don't hold her hand. That's it. That's the line for you, okay? And if you continue to burn, you better find the right one and put a ring on it. Okay, so let me, let me give you some resources. Um, every, every series, every sermon in the series, I'm going to give you more resources because I can't in one talk, like, give you all the content that, that is on this subject. So this is a bunch of, for you single people, parents, you know, other content on this, man, you, you grab it. It's yours. I'd love for you to continue this conversation and continue this study. But if today you find yourself trapped by some of these strongholds of the lies the enemy has told you, whatever, whatever that is, whether it's online, a natural person, or whatever, I'm going to give you today four ways to be free. Four ways that you can be free in Jesus' name and overcome sexual strongholds. Number one, you got to start here. We got to make a commitment to God's way and God's word. You don't have to feel it. Listen to me, church. You got to choose this. This is a choice you make. I'm not going to let my feelings define my life. I'm going to go back to the manufacturer's guidelines, and I'm going to let him determine how I operate my life and my sexuality. If you're here today and you're on the doorstep of adultery, or you feel empty or cheapened by your decisions and deception, you're trapped in pornography, please hear me. Turn around. Turn around. Around. I, what you're going to find is God's arms are wide 
open. He's not mad at you. He's not looking down at you. What are you going to find too? We here at Discovery, our arms are wide open. In fact, we're all in a very similar place on this. We all have a past. We all have stains. You're not going to be shunned or anything. Turn around and come on in. Arms are wide open. We have groups, honestly, for this outside. There's a tent out there. If you are one of the 68% of men that are struggling with pornography or the 56% of women struggling with pornography or any kind of sexual addiction or lust, do not feel ashamed of that. Break that stigma and break free in Jesus' name. You can be free of this, okay? Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 says, Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. They're the red as crimson. They shall be like wool. I, I want you to know that God can restore the inner sense, the reality within your soul of cleanliness. You may not feel like, you may feel like you've messed up, you've gone too far. God can restore your inner soul to, to a place where it doesn't even match your past. It matched what Jesus did on the cross. That's what he wants. And that's why I've been praying for you, that you would experience this reconciliation today, this restoration of your soul. And I'm praying for you to be restored sexually, to not be defined by your habits or your addictions or your past or your internet or people or your activities, but defined by God. But you have a role to play in this. God has a role and he's going to open you with arms like you, but you got a role to play in this. Paul says it like this, therefore come out from them and be separate. That's your role in this. You need to, I don't know what coming out from it, it might be an actual relationship, maybe a department that you're in where you're someone else in that department that you need to be removed from. It may be an entire job. It may be the internet, maybe some of your subscriptions. It may be whatever it is, you got a role to play. Come out from them and separate yourself, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing. And here's what God says, I'll receive you. I'm not going to reject you. I've been waiting for you to do this. Come on. Come on, I'll receive you. Come on in, man. I love you. I'm for you. He says, I'll be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. In other words, you're going to experience the love of God in ways that some of you have never dreamed when you finally just get honest and shed the lie and shed your shame and run to him. It's powerful. This fool, this life that God offers you, you can break this. Here, number two, and this is a giant one, and there's no way you're going to overcome the enemy's onslaught. I'm telling you, his attack by this message alone, because his attack is consistent. You're going to have to do, number two, you're going to have to learn how to manage your mind. Manage your mind. we got to figure this out, because I'm telling you, the enemy is, is, is very crafty, and he's getting his messaging to your mind. The porn industry alone is a $97 billion industry, you guys. And much of that revenue and market share is going back into how to get more of your mind, how to trap you. That's, that's what they want to do. That's their, that's, and it's not just through porn. They're investing in other avenues and commercials and magazines and other ways and industries to just get you to take a step forward, and they put a little crack in the door because they know once they got a crack, they're going to get you. They're not just investing in porn. They're trying to get you to just watch an article, okay? Read an article. The $97 billion is crazy. It's crazy. To give you like some comparison of that, the NFL makes $12 billion a year annually. NBA, $8 million. Major League Baseball, $10 billion. You combine all that. NFL, NBA, and MLB revenue doesn't even scratch the surface on the annual revenue of the porn industry. Pornography isn't just a hidden struggle. It's a multi-billion dollar industry and empire that's bigger than the entire sports industry combined. Okay, The music industry is $21 billion. Hollywood box office revenue is $11 billion. Porn makes more than Amazon, Prime, Netflix, and Hulu combined, which they make about 60 million, 60 billion combined. It's, it's two-thirds of what they make, okay? We have to learn how to manage our mind in a world that is trying to deceive, destroy us. Jesus said it like this. This is how important it is. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says, you've heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. Well, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not doing sleeping with anyone. I'm just online. You know, I'm just like, it's just me, and it's not really harming anybody. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully, you already made a decision in your heart, has committed adultery with them, Jesus says. So there comes a point, no, temptation itself is not sin. It's not. 
But there comes a point where you act upon that temptation and it builds, it, it yields fruit in your life. And sometimes the action is not the adultery, it's you pretending adultery online. It's you watching something online and by yourself masturbating. That's an, an adulterous heart. That is, that it, you need to learn how to manage your mind if you want to break free from, your, from these uh, uh, sexual strongholds. Romans chapter 8 says it like this. Y'all with me today? Breathe. Come on. <sighs> Y'all okay? All right. We're going to get through this. I'm just, Romans 8, those who are dominated by the simple nature, think about simple things. This is what, that's what's a problem here. It's not like, oh, no one else is involved. No, your mind is. The Holy Spirit is. Okay? Your mind and you are going to be dominated. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit, they've disciplined themselves and managed their mind to actually think about the things the Holy Spirit desires. Your sinful nature, if that controls your mind, he says, you're dead. You are dead if you're continuing to let the sinful nature control your mind. But if the Holy Spirit controls your mind, there's life and peace. So what do we do? we got to figure out a way. If you need to remove Netflix, if you need to cancel a subscription, if you need to block your phone or change your number or change your zip code or change your job, whatever it is, got to manage your mind. Number three, we have to maintain healthy relationships. Maintain healthy relationships. And what do I mean by that is that relationships are key in this whole thing, you guys. Ladies, if you got a guy or guys, if you got a girl, most times the other way around, but if they're telling you, I love you, and, and they want to do married things, run. Run. Okay? I love you, though. And it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. Run from that doorknob of a man. Okay? Just get, get away from it. Okay? Again, I won't go into the stray, God, stray dog's comment, but you know what? First Corinthians chapter 15 says, don't be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. You got to be careful of who you are around, all right? And this is why we have small groups here at Discovery, why you need to be connected to the right people on the good side. Like, yeah, there's some people that you need to cut off and distance yourself from, but you need to engage in the right relationships. And you need to invite them in to uh, the, the right level of, of awareness of your life. You need to share your life 360 with some people. Your location, if you got an iPhone, share your location with some people. You need to share your passwords with them and, and, and get on a, like a Covenant Eyes program where other people are seeing your, your downloads and your internet searches. And, and you just need to get some people, the right people, in your life. Some of you need to go outside and sign up, and that's okay. Do it. Don't be ashamed about it. Get your freedom. Don't do it alone. James 5.16 says, make this a common practice. We need to make this so common, man. Forget the stigma and the shame that the enemy uses to keep you distant from the things of God, from your freedom, from your healing, and from your wholeness. Make this a common practice. Confess your sins to each other. Like, we all got stuff going on, man, but you need someone that knows it. Someone that knows. I got people in my life, I know what's, they know what stuff is going on. I tell you some of my stuff, but I ain't tell you all my stuff. I'm not. I'll tell you a lot of it, but I'm not going to tell you. Some of it's still bacon. No, seriously, some of it has to do with my kids. And I'm like, I can't share that with you. I'm going to talk to someone else about my, my stuff. You, here's what I'm saying. Like, you don't need to stand on a stage and tell. You don't need to be, like, wearing it everywhere and be like, I'm gonna, I got lust and I am a porn addict or anything like that. Like, like, you don't need to. You don't need to do that. But you better find somebody. You better find a, 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 a group of people that know what's going on in your life. Why? Here's what he says. Pray for each other so that you may live together whole and healed. This, if you want to be whole and healed, you need to get a community around you that knows really what's going on. And lastly, we're not just being delivered from something, we're being delivered to something. We, we, we have, you have a greater purpose that isn't worth exchanging for the temporary thrills the enemy is offering you. Number four is this, the breaking strongholds. Magnify God's plan for my life. That's what I need to do. I need to magnify the purpose of God. See, the way you flee towards sexual immorality is you run towards Jesus. Because I promise you, if you're running towards Jesus, you're running away from sexual immorality. Jesus and sexual immorality will never be side by side. You will never be pursuing Jesus and living sexually immoral at the same time. It will not happen. So some of you need to stop playing defense. Stop don't, thou shalt not, no, 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 no touchy, bad, bad, bad. Stop it and start playing offense, man. Then pursue Jesus with reckless abandonment and pursue God's purpose for your life. If you got some sexual strongholds today, 
your problem isn't that you're too obsessed with sex. Your problem is you're not obsessed enough with Jesus. It's, it's not that you love sex too much. Listen to me. It's that you don't love Jesus enough. I know that's a hard truth, huh? But that's the reality of what you're trading. Other loves, you're giving your heart to things that you love, other loves other than him. And it's not worth it. For a temporary thrill, it's not worth it. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, it says, with promises like this to pull us on, like to be cleansed, <laughs> Of all my sins, and I'm like a scarlet, now white as snow, for God to receive me with open arms and restore me and forgive me and, and heal me and give me purpose for my life. With promises like this, man, dear friends, let's make a clean break with everything that defiles and that is distracting us, both within my life, the things that I'm struggling with in, and the things outside of me that's defiling and distracting. Let's make our entire lives fit in holy temples for the worship of God. And that's my challenge for you today, that you would experience restoration of your soul. Look at the promises. Let's stop, let's make a clean break with whatever it is that is distracting you and defiling you from being who God has called you to be. Hey, thank you for watching the Discovery Church YouTube channel. Don't stop here. Join the Discovery Online family every Sunday. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream event and share it with a friend. You can also support the ministry by clicking the give button to help us continue to reach people around the world for Jesus Christ. Thank you again for watching. Go love God, love each other, and change the world.